Welcome to the lectures on deep reinforcement learning. In this part, I will show that eligibility traces appear naturally in policy gradient, and I will show how they arise. So let's just remind ourselves what we have in policy gradient. We want to optimize the return starting at a state STAT. And then, as we have seen in the previous lecture, the parameters are updated according to the gradient. We want to maximize this return. Then what appears is the derivatives with respect to the log probabilities and log probability is not just in the current state, but also in the next states. Now, what is this return? The return is the total accumulated discounted reward collected in one episode starting at state ST with action AT. Okay, so that's the starting point. Now, what we are going to do is in the first step, we will just rewrite this return. The return is the reward now at time t, discounted reward for the next time step, squared gamma for the third time, gamma cube for the third time step, and so forth. And then we say, well, actually, we don't just want to optimize the return from the state that we have right from the starting state here, st, but in a different episode, we might have started in a different state, maybe in the state that we actually encounter now in time t plus one. So we also use the same optimization formula, the same update formula for all other states that we encounter on the way. And then we reorder the terms so we have seen these terms on the previous slide. We are going to reorder these terms according to when we get the reward, at the moment when we get the reward. And let's just do this. And this is now a longish calculation. You will do it if you want as an exercise as home, step by step. I just want to give you a flavor of the essential ideas. So we have these returns. And if you optimize the return, then this is the type of terms we find. We find. And then I said the first step is to plug this in. Step one, let's plug in this expression here. OK, so let's do this. This is so this whole thing is the return. And then this part here appears over there. So let's try to do this for the second part as well. Now I have a return that starts at st plus one. So st plus one, the first term would be rt plus one. And this gamma here, I already plugged in here. I've plugged this in here. Yeah, so and that's why we have a gamma squared here. Now, on the right hand side, in this term, I've had these terms over here, they appear here, and uh, this is this with the gamma. Now let's do this again for the third line. So I plug in the return. The return now, I have this gamma goes in here and this goes in here. Of course, there would be many terms um, which I don't want to take right now. And then this term gives this term. So now I have 
this new formula uh, which we should read off let me let me highlight it so instead of the line we had before we now work with this line here instead of that line we work with this line and then we work with this line here so this is for the moment i've just performed step one i inserted the expression for the return so this is what we now have we have this expression for this for this return so far just to rewrite so this was done by optimizing the return from state stat so we start in state st and we go towards the end end of trial but then in some other episode i might actually start here in this trial here and so i may also want to op optimize the return if i just start in state as t plus one if i do that i can redo the full calculation yeah so i now take the same terms but this is my starting state so let's look at the formulas that we have derived above and just adapt them so what we get now is that the first term that was rt before is now rt plus one the second term is now rt plus two and so forth and this is combined with at plus one st plus one that would be the copy of the first line or the adaptation of the first line adaptation of the second line and then there would be a third line and so forth but now i can say well maybe in some other trial in some other i would i would start an episode in state s t plus two and then i again want to optimize the primers so i get all these different terms and now the trick is the following now I want to reorder the terms according to the reward in time step t plus n. So that's, let's pick t plus two. So I have here my first state. I take my first action at, I get my first reward. I take my second action here, I get the reward t plus one and then here at some point i get my report r t plus two so let's look at these terms r t plus two and only at these there's one here it goes together with p with the policy a t plus two s t plus two then there's another of these terms which is here, which also goes together with this. So I can remove this term in that line here and just write here one plus gamma because I have this extra gamma here. But then I have another of these terms that come with gamma squared and which also has at plus two, st plus two. So you see that this is just a rewrite of normally I have an update parameter here, sort of a, an, a learning rate. I wrote proportional to eta times. Yeah. And so it's now just a rescaling of this eta. There's an effective eta, which is eta times, then in brackets, one plus gamma plus gamma squared plus gamma third power and so forth. So it's just a rescaling which amounts to taking an effective eta that corresponds to this rescaling so i was 
one of the terms. I still work with RT n plus 2. I look at the reward here. But now let's look at this term here. This is no longer, this is again RT plus 2, but it's no longer the policy at time t plus 2, but it's the policy at time t plus 1. Okay? And I have another one of these. It's here, and it comes also like this. So now I also have, I am here. I'm here in state st plus 2. I've taken action t plus 2, and I've just seen the reward. And now I not only have to worry about the actions I've taken here, but I also have to take worry about the actions I've taken in this step here state t plus 1, action t plus 1, state t plus 1, action t plus 1, state t plus 1, action t plus 1. And again, I can sum up these terms together at the moment when I receive the reward t plus 2. I have to worry about these terms. And again, this is the same type of combination. I have an extra gamma here, but then I have a gamma squared here. And if I would go further back, I would have another gamma, a gamma to the power of three. So it's like at this moment here, I have a somewhat weakened memory of what I did before at time t plus one. And then I have an even further weakened memory of what I did at time t. So now, if you now think this way, you can say that was my policy action. I've taken action T at state ST. And then the effect of this policy has decayed two steps when I get the reward RT plus two. I have taken a certain action a t plus one in state s t plus one, and this has decayed one step until I get to reward t plus two. So this rewriting, reordering terms in the book of Sutton and Barto is referred to as switching between the forward view and the backward view. I'm not completely familiar with that terminology. I'm not at ease with that terminology. However, you see that what they want to express, it's, it's a change of perspective. We really look at what happens at this moment here, and then we see what, what matters is sort of decaying memories of things that have happened one state before, two steps before, three steps before, four steps before. And these decaying memories are just the eligibility traces. So what we do here is we say we update eligibility traces proportional to this derivative of the log policy. And then these eligibility traces always decay. And finally, we do the update proportional to the value, the momentary value of the eligibility traces and things that have state action pairs that have that are farther away have decayed a little bit. And uh, this would be proportional to the rewards. Like in our case, I highlighted the reward at time t plus two. But of course, we can also subtract the baseline and then instead of the rewards, we would get the delta difference reward minus the baseline, which is the difference between the value at state S and gamma times the value at state T plus one. So this is the background why I claim that eligibility traces appear naturally in policy gradient methods.
It's just a smart rewrite, a smart reordering of terms. So maximizing the discounted return with policy gradient gives natural rise to eligibility traces. And now the cool thing is that these eligibility traces are really easy to implement. You just run a trial. At each time step, you observe state action reward. You update your eligibility traces. You let them decay. You increase with respect to the derivatives of the log probabilities, log policies. And then you update the parameters with the momentary reward information at time t, which could be the delta t if you subtract the bias or, direct, or directly the reward at time t. So it's completely online and a complete uh, an, an algorithm that can be implemented in a complete online fashion. Let's go now back to the pseudo algorithm of the actor critic. So we have these two eligibility traces of the critic of the actor. We have the delta values. The delta values use the momentary reward at time t. It compares it with these um, estimated values, v of the next state, v of the previous state. Now, I would write in here a gamma. Sutton and Bartor correct for an additional bias, which is just an online average of, of whatever is still remaining as a bias. And then you update the two eligibility traces. I talked about the eligibility trace of the actor, but of course there's also the eligibility trace of the critic, which is a standard TD lambda type of update of, uh, of the value function of the eligibility trace. And then this gives rise to the two updates of the critic with parameters w, of the actor with parameters theta, and you go to the next state. To summarize, in actor critic with eligibility traces, the actor learns with policy gradient. And what I've shown is that the eligibility traces appear naturally in such a setting. The critique learns by TD learning. Having an eligibility trace in the critic avoids the problem of slow information transfer that we have seen for TD algorithms. Therefore, we have a rapid learning of the critic. And this makes the V values available, estimates of the V values, which are then used in the TD updates. Now, the eligibility trace are always updated while moving. So the updates are completely online, completely on policy. It's a super short backup diagram. And for each parameter, we have one eligibility trace. I call this a shadow parameter, sort of it's running in the background. There's a real parameter that decides about the actions. There's sort of this running average as a shadow parameter. And you can think of this as a candidate weight update, but the actual update of the weights is proportional to this TD delta. And this is a very nice algorithm. And I really suggest that if you work with reinforcement learning, try out the actor critic with eligibility traces.